Hey everyone, it's Shannon Rose with another top tip with Topaz Labs. Today we're going over a few adjustments in Topaz Studios to show you the creativity and control you can have over your images. We're going to start with this image of a girl sitting on a stump overlooking a river. What we're going to do is make the background seem more painterly while keeping her realistic. This way it looks as if she was dropped into a painting. We'll be using one helping of impression, one spoonful of AI Remix, and one healthy scoop of HSL color tuning. We'll also be using masking, blending modes, and opacity settings to help control the effects of each adjustment and how it's applied to your photo. I'll also be adding an additional tip at the end of this just for fun. With that being said, let's jump beat first into these edits. First, we're going to start with Impression, so go to the Adjustments drop-down menu and select Impression. The very first thing I want to do is mask out my girl. This way, any effects we put on the photo does not affect her in any way. So go to the Mask icon, which is the white box in between the Adjustments name and the Eye icon, and click it. This will open the Mask menu. We're going to select a slightly smaller brush, keep the masking area white, and the mask itself black. Select the black square to be sure we have the black mask out brush selected and color in the girl and her hair. When this is complete, select done at the bottom. Now we'll get into the adjustment settings. Select the first brush in the brush application grid and apply it to this image. I want this to look like an acrylic painting and be a little bit messy at the same time, but first we're gonna get into our brush settings. The number of strokes I want applied is medium, brush size is 0.53, paint volume is 0.18, and paint opacity is 0.50. These settings allow you to control the amount and intensity of the paint applied so you can see the detail of the paint strokes by choosing if you want a bigger brush or smaller brush. This also allows you control over the amount of detail applied to the image. Let's go ahead and finish this up. The stroke length is 0.29, the spill is 0.29, smudge is 0.09, and coverage is 0.74. I really love playing with these settings because it allows you to control the messiness of the paint and how it interacts with the photo. Next, we'll go into the lighting drop down menu below this section at the bottom of this adjustment menu. This will give the image a more vibrant feeling like you often get with acrylic paintings. Brightness is negative 0.07, contrast is 0.19, highlight is 0.14, shadow is negative 0.24, and I'm going to add a little bit of vignette at 0.14. We're also going to add a little bit of texture to give this image a canvas feeling to play more on the idea of making this more and more like an acrylic painting in the background. The texture we're going to select is in the third row and second column. So for the texture strength, we're going to put 0.40 and texture size 0.39. This gives the image a subtle underlining texture to resemble a canvas, which adds to the effect of this being two separate images spliced together. Woo! Now that we're through all of that, let's bring the opacity to 0.71 and let's move on to the next adjustment. The colors still seem a little muted to me, so we're going to add an AI Remix adjustment to add a little bit of texture and bring some life to this color. Go to the Adjustments menu and select AI Remix. The first thing we're going to do is edit the mask like we did before, but we're going to do it in a little different way. Since we already have the mask created, we're simply going to copy the mask from one adjustment and paste it to this one. Click the mask icon on the previous adjustment. This should activate the masking section and cause the masking menu to drop down. Select the hamburger menu in between the invert icon and the reset icon. Clicking this menu should activate it and it allows you to select copy mask. Close that adjustment by using the arrow under the adjustment name, then scroll down and select the mask on AI Remix. Go to the same hamburger menu on this adjustment and select paste mask. This time, we're going to add a little bit to this mask. Select a gray brush and brush in the tree stump. That way, the adjustments don't fully affect this area, but there's still a little bit of this adjustment showing through. After completing this, close the masking menu by clicking Done. 
Now we can go into the actual settings of this adjustment. The style we're going to choose is in the fifth row second column and it looks a little bit like a pasture. Go ahead and click it. This should apply the style directly to your image. We aren't going to do too much to the settings, so close the drop down menu and go into the opacity. We're going to set our opacity to 0.37 and the blend mode to color. This allows AI Remix to adapt better to the colors of the image and the previous adjustments. With the addition of the AI Remix, the look of a textured background is a lot more evident. In addition, the color of the water is more vibrant, the yellow of the trees pop, but they aren't too distracting, and we even added a bit more green to the mountains across from her. I would still like to play with a few of the colors in the background to make them seem more painterly, so we're going to apply an HSL color tuning adjustment. The final adjustment is an HSL color tuning. We're going to apply the mask like we did in the first two adjustments one more time, but since we already have it copied, all we have to do is go into the mask menu on this layer. So go to the hamburger menu inside the masking menu and select paste mask. Now we get to play with the settings of the adjustment. The colors we're going to edit are overall color, yellow, aqua, and blue. I want them to be a bit more bold, like paint, so that's exactly what we're going to do. The yellow settings are yellow saturation 0.21. Next is the aqua settings. Aqua saturation is 0.35, and aqua lightness is 0.24. Blue settings are blue saturation is 0.25. 39. Next, we're going to go back into the overall settings and set it as overall hue is 0.15, overall saturation is 0.17, and overall lightness is negative 0.07. This allows the colors to pop more and by upping the saturation, making them appear more vivid to closely mimic paint colors. Now we're going to go into the detail settings. Details is 0.26, suppressed artifacts is 0.08, color sensitivity is 0.28. This allows the program to pay closer attention to the color variation within the photo. And finally, go to the opacity and bring it down to 0.72. As you can see, the application of all these settings makes the background mimic an almost impressionistic acrylic painting, separating the girl from the image in a way. Since we haven't had a tutorial on digital frames either, I thought I would take the time to add an extra tidbit to this top tip. Now, I'm going to do a pretty simplistic frame from the default settings because I like the way it fits the photo, but what I am going to do is go in and edit the texture around the frame. In the texture selection grid, we're going to select the second texture out of the first row. This is actually one of my favorite textures in Studio as a whole, so I tend to lean toward it pretty often. After selecting this texture, we're going to go down to the color setting because I want the colors of the frame to play more off of the blue of the water. And instead of picking a frame that mimics the color, we're going to edit the color of the frame to our liking. So go to the frame's color setting menu at the bottom and set them to the following. Frame brightness is negative 0.22. Frame contrast is 0.27. Frame detail to soften up the texture a little bit is negative 0.26. Frame saturation is 0.25. The extra color strength is 0.88. And the extra color hue is 0.57. This way, it amps up the hue to look more like the green and the aqua in the river and the trees behind her. As you can see, this just adds an extra touch to our image to give it a more professional presentation. Well, that's it for today's top tip. Join me next time to see what you can learn.